Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm the GCSE science teacher and in today's video we're going to be learning about metal extraction for GCSE chemistry. If you do enjoy this video, feel free to give it a like, share it with someone else and please do subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for your support, so let's get into it. So unreactive metals such as gold are found in the Earth's crust. However, most metals are actually found as compounds. An ore is a rock that contains metals which can actually be extracted. You can have two different types of ores, higher grade ores which have a high percentage of the metal or low grade ores that actually have less of that metal within them. And there's a few extraction techniques that can be used to extract those metals. And we're gonna talk about those today. Remember that metals are a finite resource, which means that once we have collected or mined all of those metals, we can't really go back and create more of them. So the mining process, it has to be considered as something that does impact the environment and we must use recycling methods and reusing methods to actually make the most of this valuable resource. So if you haven't already seen my previous video in chemistry for the reactivity series, I recommend you have a watch of that too. I'll link it in the cards above or at the end of this video for you. But the reactivity series essentially shows a list of metals in order of reactivity. So at the top, you'll have potassium, sodium, lithium, etc. And these are the more reactive metals with potassium at the top being the most reactive. And as you go down the list, the reactivity gets less and less where you have at the bottom the inert metals like platinum and gold. Now we can actually use different extraction techniques to extract these metals from their compounds and it depends on the reactivity and where they are within that reactivity series based on what method you use. So some of the methods that you need to know for GCSE include electrolysis. We also know about heating with carbon and if you're a higher tier student you'll need to know about phytomining and bioleaching, which are two biological methods of metal extraction. So I'm going to go through each one of these, um, but just as a bit of an overview, if you have a look at the reactivity series, like I said, the most reactive metals are at the top, often require electrolysis to extract them. You technically could use electrolysis to extract any of the metals that are in the reactivity series. However, because it's such an expensive process, it requires a lot of energy to do so. It would be too expensive to do this. So we could use another method that's a bit cheaper, a bit more affordable. That takes me to my next method, such as heating with carbon. Carbon is a really good reducing agent. I'm going to explain what that means, but any metal that is lower down on the list than carbon, so zinc, for example, if it's less reactive than carbon, it can be extracted when it is heated with carbon. Remember, though, carbon is a non-metal and is found on the right-hand side of the periodic table. Lastly, there are other reactions in chemistry that we can use to extract other inner metals. Often these ones are found within their raw state, but it's just something the exam board wants you to know that they, there are other uh, chemical reactions that can be used, but they don't want you to know a huge amount of detail here. So how exactly is carbon used to extract metals? Well, the metals that are less reactive than carbon can be extracted when they're heated with carbon. And this is done through a displacement reaction. So the carbon will effectively displace or swap out the metal from the compound and remove the oxygen from the oxide. And this just leaves the metal on its own. So an example of this is zinc oxide. And we want to get zinc as the metal. We want to extract zinc from its compound form. So when we heat it with carbon, the carbon, because it's more reactive than zinc, will displace the zinc from the oxide to form zinc on its own and carbon monoxide. Now, carbon monoxide, remember, is a poisonous gas. It's colorless, it's odorless, but it can cause a lot of problems if inhaled. It can even lead to death. So carbon monoxide is often, um, this process is continued slightly further to create carbon dioxide, which is a less toxic gas, a less dangerous gas. Um, you can see the symbol equation for this reaction here. You can also see the state symbols. Remember, state symbols just show what state of matter this particular reactant or product is in. So the zinc oxide is in a solid form. The carbon is also in a solid form. This produces a liquid zinc and a gaseous carbon monoxide in this case. Now, a couple of things the exam boards want you to know is what is actually happening in terms of oxidation and reduction. Now, this term can actually mean a couple of things. Oxidation, in the case of this example, is when oxygen is 
gained by a particular element and reduction is the loss of oxygen however oxidation and reduction can also mean a different definition in the case of electrons which i'm not going to be talking about in this particular example as i don't want to confuse things however in this case zinc is reduced because it loses the oxygen and because the carbon has gained the oxygen it's actually what we call redu it's, it's actually what we call oxidized and therefore carbon is the reducing agent in this case so let's have a go at an example for yourself please do comment below what you predict the answers are copper oxide reacts with carbon to form two different products what could they be do tell me in the comments below what is reduced what is oxidized and what is the reducing agent a bit of a clue for you look at the reactivity series is copper more or less reactive than carbon and go from there i will also leave the solution in the description box below as always so those of you who are studying the higher tier exam content, this is a couple of biological processes that can be used to extract metals. The first one being phytomining. Sometimes it's called phytoextraction as well. Essentially, it uses plants to extract metals from the soil. And it does this for a couple of reasons. So it's used to extract toxic metals from the soil or even to extract low-grade ores um, or, lo or the metals from low-grade ores, I should say. Um, how is this done then? So the plants themselves are planted in the soil that contain either the low grade ores or have the toxic metals within the soil itself. And um, the toxic metals could have come from somewhere like a mine that used to be in that vicinity, in that environment. So those plants, as they are growing in the soil, they will absorb through their root system the metals that are found within them. Um, and these metals are in their ion form. And as that plant starts to develop and grow, we can actually collect those plants and burn them and the ash that is left behind will actually contain the metal compound. Um, a way I like to help my students remember this is to remember that P is for plants and P is for phytomining or phytoextraction because the next one is another biological process you need to know. So this one is called bioleaching, B for bacteria, B for bioleaching. Um, essentially a similar idea, we are using bacteria, however, another biological organism to extract metals from their ores. Um, some bacteria have um, the ability to break down metal ores and form acidic solutions, um, certain strains of bacteria. They're very fascinating organisms of bacteria. Um, and essentially the acidic solution, the leachate that forms contains the metal, and we can actually use this if we wish to. Um, so that is one of the methods of extracting metals that is a bit of an obscure one, but something you need to know if you are studying the higher tier content. And then the last one that a lot of students ask for support with, and I, like I said before, will be making an entire video dedicated to electrolysis. So do give this video a thumbs up or comment down below if you would like me to prioritize the creation of that video. I would be more than happy, happily do that for you guys. Um, but essentially electrolysis in brief is a way of extracting metals by using electricity. Um, the actual solution that the metal is found within, we often call this an electrolyte. Um, and an electrolyte essentially is a ionic compound that has been dissolved in water, it's molten. And because it's an ionic compound, it has a charge so that we can actually have the solution, those ions, those charged uh, substances are able to move freely within solution and conduct electricity. And this is how we can actually separate or actually extract metals from the, the compound itself. Um, and like I say, this is a very common method that is done. It's quite expensive, however. Um, but like I say, I will go into a bit more detail because there's quite a few exam questions that come up with electrolysis, um, specifically predicting different products that form at either anode or cathode um, and just general uh, practicals that you need to be aware of as well. So do let me know in the comments below if you would like an entire video on that. I will start creating it, um, but it's good to know if that's something you are interested in as well. I hope you did enjoy the video. Thank you so much for your time. I've been the GCSE science teacher and you have been curious. If you did enjoy the video, please do subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much to everyone who already has. It's really great to have you as part of my community here. Um, if you want more videos from me, please do check out the playlists that are linked here. I also have an Instagram and a TikTok. I know some of you already know this, but I would like to share that with you if you want some more revision resources, whether it's for chemistry or if you want some help with biology or physics. I also create videos and other resources on those social medias as well as YouTube um, for all three sciences at GCSE. Thank you so much for your time. If you have any questions or you have any requests of videos you'd like me to create, please do let me know in the comments. And until next time, have a fantastic day. Take care. Bye.